Hey guys, it's Melanie. Happy Sunday. So we are currently kind of towards the tail end of my 2021 holiday decorate with me series. Um, thank you guys so much for um, watching those videos. I know that this is a little bit different from my usual content, but honestly, um, it just makes me really happy to to decorate for some reason. I just I get a kick out of it. And I think it's just because I'm an insanely creative person and right now I'm not doing a lot of floral work. Um, I have like some holiday orders and stuff, but um, I am someone who definitely thrives on being able to have a creative outlet and um, I take that out on my home a lot. <laughs> so for like the different seasons, I go a little bit over overboard with some of the decor, but I don't know, it just, it kind of, I guess, ticks that box for me for just needing to like get some of my creative aggressions out. So anyway, I thought that in today's video, um, I would just share some of my favorite like uh, decorating tips and tricks that help me get a really great end result. Most of these tips and tricks kind of revolve around like how to decorate a tree, but you could really um, apply these principles to different areas that you're decorating in your house as well. Um, so for example, a lot of this stuff would also apply to decorating like a garland up on a mantle or something. So um, yeah, I do have some notes that I wrote down because there's kind of a lot that I try to keep in mind when I decorate. So I just wanted to be able to share that with you guys. So um, we're going to dive right into it. Um, my number one suggestion is pick a theme. Um, it doesn't really matter what your theme is, even if it's just like traditional Christmas decor, like if that is your theme and it is, you know, that you display uh, all the things that you have collected over the years. So it's, you know, kind of this like more eclectic approach to decorating for Christmas or if you, you know, if you like a kind of snowy, wintry wonder theme, go with like a winter wonderland type of theme. And you don't necessarily have to have the same thing or the same theme throughout the entire house. Like I have different areas where I kind of have like a different vibe going, you know, in the entryway, it's kind of like, um, like a winter wonderland, snowballs, icicles type of theme, you know, like more like outdoorsy theme in the front living room it's a very like traditional red and gold style of decorating um the family room is kind of a like winter wonderland again where i use maybe a lot more of like the whites just to try to keep that area a little bit lighter because it's kind of dark in our house but just pick a theme um again it can vary from room to room or you can do consistent throughout your entire house but i really think that that helps you with your just starting process like it gives you some place to start you can kind of start thinking about like okay these are the colors these are the textures these are the shapes and you can pull all those things together then um, when you are setting up your garland, either up on your mantle, when you put it up on your mantle, make sure that you get some command hooks and attach that thing up there. Even if you have a nice wide mantle, I would definitely recommend still attaching it because if anyone bumps into it, like once it starts coming down, it's going to come down in one piece. And if you put a lot of stuff up there like I did, um, that's a lot of candlesticks and ornaments and reindeer and stuff just going crash <laughs> so attach that garland with those command hooks um i just i buy them at like hobby lobby and i've never had a problem with the woodwork in our house they release very easily never leave any marks so do that and then when you're setting up your trees and your garlands make sure you take the time to fluff so as if you have a fake tree fluff it as you do each section like as you you know put the different tiers onto your fake tree fluff each section individually and really take your time there's nothing worse than like getting the entire tree put together and you're looking at it and you're like oh there's a bunch of holes and then you have to go back in and you have to reach inside of the tree to like you know separate the branches do it as you like attach the different levels to each other if you have a tr fake tree you know what i'm talking about but really take the time to separate all those branches get them looking all pretty and fluffy again same thing with your garland take the time to do that because it really makes the end result look that much better um and it's it's worth it trust me it really is okay 
So I always, when I'm decorating a tree, I always start at the top. So I put the topper on first. I realize that it's traditional to kind of like put the topper on last and it's like, you know, the crown jewel of your tree or whatever. But I think it's a heck of a lot easier to get that thing attached to the top when you don't have any other ornaments that you are trying to like kind of hover around to not disturb. So starting at the top and working your way down, especially if you have a really tall tree, is a super good idea because that way as you're like needing to like wire things to the tree, you're, you're just not disturbing all of the other ornaments at the bottom or that you're leaning up against. Um, I feel like that's pretty self-explanatory. Start at the top, work your way down. Um, I like to go in next with all of my ribbons. I really like using ribbons because it can take up a lot of room on a tree so you don't necessarily need as many ornaments. Um, this is kind of nice if you have a like a nine foot or above type of tree. Ribbon can definitely go a long way in helping to fill out some of that space. Um, also, be generous with the ribbon. Think about layering different ribbons. Maybe you have a really wide one and you put like a smaller ribbon over top. I love layering ribbons. Think about doing that. Um, and also have way more ribbon than you think you're going to need because it takes quite a bit of ribbon to really make it look substantial. Um, don't skimp. That's kind of my number one suggestion is don't skimp. And here's the thing. You can decorate your tree however you want, right? Like if you are the type that just wants to have your kids put all the ornaments on the tree, if that's what like makes you happy, totally do that. Like I'm kind of giving the tips for those that want to try like a more like perfectionist approach to a tree. So you want it to look like one of those department store trees or something. But all Christmas trees are beautiful. Like whether, you know, it's decorated by your five-year-old or whether it's decorated by you who took like four hours to put the ornaments on, right? So do what makes you happy in that department. But yeah, be generous with your ribbon and really loop it in and out several times. It doesn't have to be perfect either. I feel like a lot of people get tripped up by ribbon. I almost think the less like perfect you try to be with it, the better the ribbon looks. All right. This is a big thing. Before you really get going with all of your like special ornaments, get a bunch of like larger um, and the bigger your tree, the larger the ornaments should be, right? Um, get some larger, even if they're plastic balls, they don't have to be nice glass ones. Try to find shiny and glittery and put those towards the inside of your tree. So make sure that you're not just decorating or putting the ornaments on the outside branches stick the ornaments inside of the tree. So the cheaper ones that you stick inside of the tree are fantastic because they will actually reflect the lights and bounce them back out like through the tree. And it just adds a like multi-dimensional type of effect. Um, and again, these are not ornaments that you have to spend a fortune on. Like you can go to Walmart, you can go to Hobby Lobby and just buy like one of those big plastic tubs of shiny glittery ornaments, right? Like. I think most of them are probably 50% off by this point. And then stick those to the inside of the tree. Really like fill that out. You don't have to do the entire inside, but just in some key areas where you want the light to be reflected out. Maybe you have kind of a bald spot <laughs> on where you're missing some branches on the inside of your tree. This is a great way to like fill those areas up and make it look um, very intentional and it really does help to bring even more sparkle to the tree. Okay, um, obviously this is like a big thing, like just making sure that you start with the smaller ornaments on top and then gradually go down to like your medium sized ornaments and then like your larger ones on the bottom. So um, don't put huge giant balls at the top necessarily. Those tend to look better when they're more towards like the middle or the bottom of the tree. They just tend to make sense as, you know, like as you go down, your ornaments should get slightly bigger, bigger, bigger. Does that make sense? Um, I just, I personally think that's aesthetically pleasing. Um, I don't like seeing big, huge ornaments like at the top of the tree and then little like tiny dinky ones hanging off the bottom. Like if you have those little tiny glass balls, don't put those at the bottom of your tree. Put those more towards the top. Um, think of the scale of your tree and the ornaments. I think this is very important. 
Um, if you have a nine foot tree, one, you're going to need a lot of ornaments and two, you're going to need probably some larger ornaments because I think the bigger the tree, the bigger you tend to like want to go with the ornaments just to keep it looking like it's appropriate in the scale, right? So if you have a smaller, just four foot like tabletop Christmas tree, you can buy like the smaller, you know, glass balls or the smaller little ornaments and stick those on that tree. But you don't want like tiny little, you know, figurines and things like that on, a, on an enormous tree, unless you have a lot of those and you can really fill it out. Um, I think scale is something that people sometimes struggle with. So just think if you're gonna get a bigger tree, you're gonna have to get some bigger ornaments to go with it. You can probably keep a lot of your old ornaments and stick them on the new bigger tree, but get some other ornaments to fill that tree out as well. Okay, next. Um, this is kind of like a small detail thing, but I think it makes a difference. Get the green ornament hooks if you have a green Christmas tree, either live or fake. And get these silver hooks if you have a white flocked fake tree or you have a white flocked real tree. You want the uh, ornament hangers to kind of disappear. It should almost be like your ornaments are kind of floating on the tree, right? Like I don't like to see the hangers. Um, so get the ones that match with your tree's color. They even have like different shades of green. There's like a darker green wired hook and then there's also kind of more like a medium green. Um, so if you have like a noble or like a like a bluey or spruce or something, you can get that lighter green. And then if you have like more of like a pine or um, I don't know, some kind of darker spruce, um, you can um, use the darker green hooks on those. So match your hooks to your tree so that they disappear. Um, use picks for texture. I love using picks, you guys. And you don't just have to go and buy like traditional picks like out of the bins at Hobby Lobby or Michaels. You can actually get like bushes or branches like of fake leaves or whatever at Michaels or Hobby Lobby again in like the flower section. And you can actually cut them apart and then stick those things into your tree as picks. Like you can certainly purchase picks, but I have taken apart a lot of these like little bushes that I've seen that I just thought, wow, those would be amazing in my tree. But I don't want to put like, you know, just like a giant bush in there. So I just, I cut it apart and use little pieces here and there. And it's a great way to like make your own custom picks. If you don't find something that you really like in the, in the bins. Um, but use a lot of different types of textures. I like to use at least two to three, sometimes four different types of picks in a tree. Um, I think the variety in the texture is very helpful. Um, I think using things like branches and pine cones. I mean, pine cones you can just go out and find in nature and you can attach those to your tree and they would look really beautiful. If you are going out in nature, to collect your pine cones, when you come home, turn your oven on the lowest setting, stick those pine cones on a baking sheet and pop them in there for about 10, 15 minutes. That'll kill any little like bugs or critters that hitched a ride in on your pine cones. You don't want those coming out on your tree throughout the holidays. Um, also, think about using your decor in a new way. This goes for everything, not just on the ornaments on your tree, but like different decor pieces that you put out throughout the house. You might have gotten into the habit to putting the same things in the same place every single year, but try moving it around. Like move, move your big white fake resin Christmas tree to the living room instead of having it in your dining room. Just kind of move things around and use them differently. You might find that you actually prefer something that you were kind of bored with in terms of a holiday decor item. Um, if you move it to a new area, it becomes all of a sudden beautiful and you're just like, wow, I appreciate this piece so much more because it just looks better here. Play around with placement. Don't always put things back in the same place because you might really like like it somewhere else. <laughs> Try colored lights instead of clear lights. I'm kind of guilty of this. I love the clear lights, but our big Christmas tree in the living room where we open our presents does have, it has little micro LED lights 
and you can change it to a colored like option and I actually really like the way that that looks I like having the variety but if you have a real tree that you put lights on or you have a fake tree that you put your own lights on try changing up the lights um, it's really easy to do um, I used to love to do a mix of like a frosted white and red lights um, I found frosted white and red together like on a string at um, Target one year and I tried that on one of my fake trees and I love the way it looked the red with the clear was absolutely stunning especially when I was combining it with my more like traditional red and gold decor that was beautiful so try changing up your lights um, stagger your ornaments make sure that you don't have too many like clumped together little children love to do this <laughs> um, Stella actually has her own tree and she has now finally gotten to the point where she understands like to not just clump things together and even this year she told me like mom you're moving that too close to that other ornament so stagger your ornaments try not to do too many clumps but sometimes it can look good to have like a little vignette going you can definitely try that as well don't ignore the base of your tree. When you get to the bottom, make sure, even if it's just a simple tree skirt, even if you just get like some, uh, like a tablecloth, a linen or something and wrap it around the base and just kind of, you know, maybe leave it a little bit like textured and messy looking, but don't just leave the base of the tree just sitting there by itself. They have all sorts of neat little like rings and boxes that you can put on the base of your tree. Um, finish it off if you're gonna spend all this time on all these ribbons and picks and ornaments and inside and outside of the tree and you know really making sure you have good spacing and you're paying attention to the details the details at the bottom match too so get something to dress that area uh, up hide your cords uh, that's one of the reasons that I really like a tree skirt or like a tree box <laughs> you can do a better job of hiding the cords you don't want this like mangled mess of cords like coming out from under the tree try to figure out a way to disguise that and then when you're putting everything away at the end of the holidays always make sure that you put things in order and that you put like with like because it just makes getting the tree and the holiday stuff out so much easier the following year I was really good about this last year for the very first time and everything that I took out I knew exactly what was in the box I labeled everything very clearly and it just made getting ready for the holidays so much easier this year so if you've never done that in the past and you just kind of throw things in boxes or you know the sterilite bins and stuff take the time to be a little bit more intentional about it and then label what's in each box I'm telling you it made getting ready just kind of a breeze this year I wasn't constantly looking through boxes where's these picks you know where's the tree topper where's you know where's the runner that I need for the dining room table so label <laughs> all right you guys those are my uh, most useful holiday decorating trips uh, ticks tips and tricks <laughs> um, I hope that you guys enjoyed let me know what your favorite decorating tip is down below in the comments and I hope that you're enjoying this series um, like I said, there's a couple more videos uh, going up, so stay tuned. Um, if you're new, I hope you'll take the time to subscribe. Otherwise, I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care. Toodaloo!